Welcome back to another exciting episode of Hobby Time in the Murder Basement, where today we have our first second episode ever featuring Min Max Minis, one of my favorite human beings of all time. Stick around, we have a great chat. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much. feeling today um pretty good like emotionally good physically like not as good because i'm sick it was fine yesterday and i'm like today it's totally back so. yeah sorry i missed your stream the other night uh it would have been awesome seeing you as uh wednesday adams on a thursday evening it was fun it was a really good stream and it like was only two and a half hours i just like ended it early because it was just like eventful it was good yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was super good. Like I was like, you know what? We had a blast. Like people, one, I um thought somebody said something racist and freaked out a little bit, and it was hilarious, and we were all crying, laughing. It was a great, and somebody like we won more stuff. It was just a blast. So Aww, good. that's good. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, uh, since the last time we talked, you being my first guest back in the murder basement, uh. You and I have gone through quite an adventure together, and I don't even quite know where the best place to start is, but I think hitting the high points of, you know, cherishing things like Thursday should be, like, real key for us, like, because that's that's the shit that makes you keep on coming back to this bizarre world of content creation we're in. Yeah. No, there's, there's like, if events that are unexpected that you can't predict and that can't happen outside of Twitch where it's like me on camera while somebody's typing something and I misunderstand it. And then like, I'm just, my face just did like, like all the, all the stages of grief within like two seconds. <laughs> like I was thinking about it afterwards. Like it's an unpredictable factor that like sitting at home and just chilling or just painting, like it doesn't have. You don't know what you're going to get. Oh, absolutely. So that's the good part of Twitch. So, like, basically neither of us were Twitch streaming last time we talked. No, we were we were barely uh, human beings, it felt like, at the time, as we were both, like, trying to understand the, the, the shutdown world and how we're, how we're supposed yeah. to navigate it. Uh, you know, you were the first person I asked to do an interview, even though we weren't the first interview. It was uh, a, a, a wild... Uh, wild world and so much has changed since then some for the better some for maybe the not so better I don't think I'll say for the worst as like we can learn from these things and, yeah, and change so. you know Just like different yeah something different something different um, I think everything ends up better eventually if you learn from it sure <laughs> <laughs> that's the hope, I mean there right? is like the what doesn't kill you makes you stronger except for like polio <laughs> right. So I do get that, but, but there generally I think it's a good like idea. Sure. So so when we last talked, um, you weren't streaming at all. I I don't think I had even started streaming, or maybe it was just a, a an idea of streaming. Um, Kefa hadn't started streaming yet. None of like the the group of friends that talks and encourages each other. We're doing the, the, the content creation game outside of Instagram, which is something I, I, I do want to talk about. You you had been on Instagram for a really long time, you know, the, doing minis, the, you know, for, for the two years when we talked. Um, and in that amount of time, you managed to get over 2,000 followers. And I just I just I'm crossed at, that oh, line. I'm over 3,000 now. So. You're at over 3,000 now? <laughs> But it's been dropping down, actually. So, I don't know. I just haven't been as active. Yeah, uh, so, Instagram is... Uh, I've been pretty good at it, but to the point where people are like, wow, you have a lot of people. And I'm like, okay, what do you expect from me? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> when I first met Kefa, he was like, looked at my Instagram, like, you have a lot. I'm like, yeah, come 
<laughs> yeah, I'm cool. Like, people want to hang out with me. I take pictures of all my minis and I say stupid stuff. Like, But, you know, like, I've done the same game. I've, you know, taken, t- taken, taken photos of my minis and shared them and shared, you know, shared the, the, the idea of content, you know, what it's like going through the phases of working on minis and, like, I never had the same sort of interaction from a community until like actually earlier this year. And then it just started like, having, yeah, I had some move, movement to it. And, um, and I think it was more people on uh, Instagram just looking at stuff. But I'm seeing people now with like 10,000 followers, you know, 15,000 followers. I think Sam Lenz has over 20,000 followers right now yeah, on I'll Twitch. Guess. Crazy. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, for me on Instagram, I'll be honest, like I went through and like interacted with people a lot. So it wasn't just me posting. Me posting would not have gotten me follows. It was like me interacting with other people, responding to messages about like, how can I improve my stuff? Like I'm just getting these messages. I had just started and was immediately getting like, what would you recommend for this? I think maybe I'm like, it was like, cause I was like attainable. Like, I'd feel intimidated to ask somebody with, like, a lot of followers, but, like, somebody who's, like, pretty good but new, I'd be like, they're fine. And I would, I'd love messaging the people back. So I think that helped a lot. That's so, Instagram. That's a new thing that's starting to happen to me. I mean, just last night I had, um, you know, a person who follows the show, I think does follow me on Twitch. I don't know. I, the, the name looks familiar, but, like, the, the worlds are so different and sometimes the, the screen names don't follow. And, um, you know, and, and just like working through helping somebody get, you know, happiness out of their hard work, you know, like that, that's a really interesting thing that happens there. Um, but it's just like, it's so weird because sometimes it feels so out of, you know, left part because nobody's asked me these things before. This is all new. Right. And you're like, huh? I get it entirely. <laughs> I still have people on the stream lately have been asking me to critique their work and I, I'm not good at it yet. I still am too afraid of her feelings. And I just like, I don't know. <laughs> More highlights. Well, and that's like such a, a critiquing work, especially without like the one-on-one, like Cutthroat and I talked about it and he looked at one of my photos and was like pretty blunt about the way he thought I should do it. Unfortunately, my photo didn't show the work that he was like, it was in there. It's just the photo wasn't very good. And so like, like I was just like, man, everything about not having the piece in person makes it so hard for the person critiquing. Like if he would have actually seen the model, he would have been like, oh, this is, you are totally on it here. More, more of this, you know, but he just couldn't see it. And um, that's one of those things that now I'm like, I need to be careful because I'll look at people's models and be like, is this, um, is this for real? <laughs> like, where are you at in the face? Because like the photos are yeah. so like washed out. You're just like, what That's am true. I looking at? You're like, is there details? And, um, you know, I've seen Teal's had to handle that with a person and he's just like, please take another photo of it. And they were like, oh, and they did. And you're like, oh, okay. I'm disregard everything I just said. You've are, you're already doing, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's true. I saw somebody on new Monday stream asked for advice and they had a hardcore filter on it. <laughs> and like, you can't see the reality of the, of the colors and stuff without it. And right. it looked really cool. And for Instagram, I think that's totally fine. But for critiquing, that's not, it just doesn't work that way. Yeah. Just, I mean, maybe if your goal is to make miniature art photos, and the filters are part of your artwork. <laughs> but if you're sure. actually wanting to learn how to paint better. Right. That's absolutely true. I mean, there's a reason that like if you go to a hair salon or a makeup place, like the lighting makes you look really ugly. Like it's stark white. It shows everything because yeah. they're not trying to make you have to look your worst before you can look your best later. So. Right. Right. Well, I mean, same with our, our frame shop Our right over our table. I, I have... Uh, fluorescent lights that are in a it's like not a cold white but it's like not quite warm it's so it's like really unforgiving and so when you shine it down on paper you're like this fucking paper's pink they're like no it's white i was like no it's pink so we have to actually make sure that we're playing around this like it has you have red undertones to your paper so we need to make sure that we aren't putting the wrong color with it and making it look odd and uh 
And so when people are seeing it, like instantly, like I've never seen this piece look like this before. I was like, I know it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Once you're in your house, you'll never notice it. But if you don't have that idea, like from the get go, (laughs) it's extremely like disappointing seeing a piece if it's wrong later on. What is, what is happening here? Like it should be right, but it's not. Yeah, you definitely want, like, the most accurate information. And that's why they pay you the big bucks. You're like, I know. That's why I have this ugly list lighting. Like, this is what you're paying me for. Right, but- right. So when you when you made the bridge over to Twitch, you did it in a way um, that I've never actually really seen anybody, like, like you, with me and Twitch, I started using my cell phone, uh, of which oh, I should have been been trying to keep a timer out so i can like go back to the thing and be like oh i said something interesting here <laughs> and be like no. at seven minutes <laughs> so we're starting now starting at the twitch which is where we're starting on the timer i was gonna tell you about that because i was in the stream when we talked about it i was gonna remind you but i didn't so uh i i've had a couple of my followers uh send me lists of things with like tags next to it and like this is warhammer versus historical gaming and and it's so helpful because like i i don't like stopping i don't like resetting my brain i like just exploring what you have to say and, and your insight into these things and yeah. You know, keeping track of that shit is really impossible. I don't know that you should. I think you should just scroll through it later and just, be, or just if you have followers, he'll do it for free. Just, <laughs> do it. but I don't scroll through it later. Be like, when was that? And they'll kind of, you'll kind of remember the conversation. Like, oh yeah, we did talk about something that was interesting there. So like, I, I I'm at the point now where like I don't remember the conversations at all. Like to be 100 oh, okay, percent okay. honest, and that, just I remember. Throw it. I remember feeling good and that's it. I'm like, this person gave something special to me. What that was, I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, never mind. Let's change that entirely. That's so funny. So, so Twitch for me was the start of like as cheap and as dirty as possible. Like I did everything on my cell phone for like the first month. It was rather weird to interact. I remember getting a lot of messages of being like, are you painting or are you just organizing your desk? And I'm like, it's filthy down here. It's, it's a fucking basement. It's a fucking basement. <laughs> but you you were like, I'm going to stream. I need, a, you, you already knew what you wanted for emotes. You had made some merch almost. Aw, oh, we're, we're twins. <laughs> Um, but I did start with my cell phone. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. but that changed like. But I had an overlay ready to go. Yeah, you, you were you were like, you actually knew what you were doing. It. It's because that was the stuff that got me excited to Twitch stream. So it took some peer pressure to get me to do it because I um had watched Twitch mini painters before, only a couple, and I thought it was really boring to be honest. So I wouldn't even watch my friends. I'm such a jerk. Kappa would be like, come watch me paint. And I'd be like, no, I really just want to watch reality TV instead. Like, I would just say, no, it doesn't sound good. So I had to find out, like, what (laughs) was going to, like, get me excited. And it was just gimmicks, emotes, and, like, overlay. I was like, yeah, this will make it fun. Like, let's. And also, like, if I figured that stuff out, then it wasn't as intimidating later. If sure. I figured, if I was like, oh, I'll never figure out the overlay, it seems so confusing because it was at first. Then I, mean, I it would was, feel it, like it is still, man. Like all of that stuff. As I start digging into it, I'm like, am I making this better or worse? <laughs> like I just don't know. Like is know. this better or worse? I'm not sure either, to be honest. But it, it it's there, and it's the spelling's right. So I got that going for me. <laughs> Spell my own name right. It's like six hundred points on your SAT. Like you're 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 doing well. It's fine. It's fine. It's acceptable. But yeah, um another thing is to be honest though, I started in May of twenty twenty. We had got those stimulus checks. So I was able to get better stuff right away because of that. So yeah. thank you. That's uh that that's pretty me. nice. I it took me forever to get my stimulus check it, 
It was one of those ones where I was like, really? Really? It's June? <laughs> Cute. Oh, yeah, no. Well, you wouldn't have seen me streaming. But <laughs> I had to get... Like, I had no face the first time because I didn't even have two cameras. Right, right. Yeah, uh, same with me. Like, and for a while, once I did get to my computer, I like I now have two of these cheap uh, webcams. They, they do their thing, and it's cool. But also, you're like, what is happening here? <laughs> yeah, I don't. And um, teals is was came into my stream really early on. Was like, you are too good for autofocus, is what he said, and I was like. But he stayed afterwards, like after the stream, and helped me w walk through how to manually focus. Now, the one I have now is the Razer Keo, and it's pretty good. But the Logitech, which I use for my face, that's the one I was using up above previously. And he helped walk me through it. Like, it was just fucking awesome. Like, just somebody comes into your Twitch and is like, I want to help you. Yeah. And then yeah. does. You're doing something good. I want to do this. No, the, And there's no ulterior motive there. <laughs> No, it, I just, I think that feedback is always good, but I don't like critical feedback without an answer. Sure. So I think it's important that if you, if you have something to like suggest to somebody, I respect it more if you have a solution that goes along with it. Hey. If you're like, you just look weird. Like, I don't know what that. Like. Yeah. I don't like the colors that you're using. Okay. Yeah. Tell me how, what you would like to see me do differently. I mean, like. <laughs> So I really appreciated that. Although you, there is a, there is a difference and you know, like this will be a theme that we come back to over and over and over again. The difference between being a guy on Twitch, being a woman on Twitch are completely different worlds. Like I did not, not believe that. <laughs> I would not have believed it. This is my karma for being skeptical of this. It's absolutely true. Yeah. It's uh you, you, I'm not going to say that I did, wasn't welcomed with open arms. I feel very fortunate that, um, you know, like I made it to affiliate on my cell phone. People came out, you know, and, and if it wasn't for people like Sam Lenz being like, no, this dude is, I keep an eye on him. He's doing cool things. Uh, you know, like it, I, I, I needed that. Um, but you walked in, you, you know, everybody was like, we're so glad that, that Nick's doing this. Like Min Max needs to be part of this she's funny she's you know positive it's great like this is what we want and the difference of people attaching themselves to you and your stream happened instantly like you instantly had people that were like and this is what i'm doing literally anytime i see her on and um and to the point where you're just like it's it's completely overwhelming Several weeks in, I was having like fame issues, like without the like necessarily all the benefits of it. I was having like people wanting to be too close to me, people yeah. which I wouldn't have understood that before, but like people starting to idolize me in ways I never expect. Maybe that could happen if I got really popular, but <laughs> not literally three weeks in. I'm like, there's a person who's messaging me all the time wanting to like learn from me but also like saying they want to be on my stream with me and this is too much i've never dealt with this i don't know yeah i, I had no idea and this isn't just like we're, we're not tooting your horn we're not like building this up like this is like you know min max is bigger than what oh. she is no this is like 100 percent honest because the the best the best part of shut down for me or one of the best parts is being able to become closer friends with you because we've been talking for like two years <laughs> and like, yeah, but like now we talk like all the, all the time. time you're legitimately one of my best friends now right. just, well, just reality you, yeah, you really you're, are so. you're one of mine and so like it's interesting seeing the differences because like i walk in and like not to say that I don't have fans and don't have people that interact with me, but the interaction is totally different. I um I didn't have people instantly telling me I'm doing things wrong or trying to manipulate the stream to be more uh, entertaining for them and their purposes. And that's the things that you could instantly see people were just like, yeah. pretty girl. I want her to do things for me. And it almost became instantly abusive and I, I was shocked because I was like, 
Nick, you got to watch out for this. This, I think, is getting crazy, and you're just like, I don't know what to do with it. (laughs) I don't know, because there's a couple of things. First of all, I never really showed my face. I wasn't trying to avoid it, but, like, I just didn't. Every once in a while, I post a picture of me, but people would ask. So I met New Meta in February, and he asked, like, so do you get treated differently because you're a girl? And I was like, no. Like, why would you think that? It never occurred to me. People messaged me like, hey, man, can you help me out with this? Like, they would think I was a guy. They would just yeah. assume because the default painter is a guy. Like, yeah. it's, percentage-wise, that's accurate. So I never had that. Also, I was not that attractive to you. I was younger. And I wasn't, I've never been treated like a quote unquote pretty girl at all. Like that's not even how I would identify, but I'm kind of being treated like that now. Like I don't even feel comfortable saying like, oh, I'm attractive. Like I don't <laughs> think that. Sure, sure. Like, but I'm getting treated that way. So I'm having to learn to respond that way. Um, so, and I mean, I like, know. it sucks because. But for years, I didn't know that you were like for like, I think a full year of us like BSing on Instagram. I didn't know that you were a woman <laughs> and and like and like and, and that's really funny because like it, it just is like, I like what you do. I think we have similar ideas and styles. This is cool. Let's let's get each other better. And, you know, and that has always been our, our relationship. And to see you have to interact with the world differently because like I walked into Twitch and it wasn't just like swing and dick in the room come check me out it was like I'm here I'm doing a thing join me if you like and you know I got really like organic growth and really cool back and forth with people but like I didn't have that same sort of level of excitement and like you could would go in your stream and chat's just going crazy and your brother's in there like egging it on and like it's like <laughs> everything about it was like like I was like working it felt like work and it was like you were running a game show almost it had this it like, like energy the man- to it. energy is what I like because later I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit I tried to make a chill stream and I was like just one day I was like I don't want to be here this is stupid all the fun is gone like, I was like, I just canceled the stream. I was like, I'm going to raid. I don't have anything to say. Like, I need, I realize I need that energy. But I want to get real serious here for a minute. The reason that I'm very authentic and with the audience, like, I think that I reach out to people is that I hated myself before Twitch. Sure. Like, I just hated myself all the time. When we first did our interview... I couldn't watch it back because I didn't want to see what I said because I thought I'd be like hated and miserable. But I thought I knew that you said that I had something to say and I thought like maybe it's worth it. Then I started Twitch streaming and I could watch my bods back and I was like, I actually like this girl. (laughs) And other people like to watch me and I was like, holy shit, like people like to watch me and they could be anywhere and they like choose to be here. Like I don't leave my house very much. Mm-hmm. I just assume that people don't want to be around me. And like now I do. And like hopefully like even if I never Twitch stream again, like I'll learn that, that like people actually like to be in my presence. So but... the the attention from Twitch made you realize that that you're you are a person of value. Like it, it was yeah. at that point. Wow. That, that serious. Like, so I'm in therapy. My therapist was like, you're the only person who's doing better during COVID than <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Cause I was doing so well because of Twitch. They were like, holy shit. Like, um, it was going really well, but there is an aspect where I am such like a person who wants to connect with other people and feel value and give them value that I, if I'm getting messages and, and like being asked questions or asked for help, it's hard for me to say no because I give everything to to people. Like sure. I'm just I give a shit. Like I give so many shits. That's the problem. So like when I'm saying I have fame issues, like there is no like flippancy to this. Like there's no, like it's very serious to me, and I think I take. I, Twitch has really affected my life, but like in good ways and bad ways, but I've had to learn a lot. Sure. Well, I mean, like, 
you know, since since we've talked and I've learned about you know your family history and you know how your your coping mechanisms and things like there are actual places where I have told you to like do things that were counterintuitive to what you needed to do for your own safety because like I have never actually seen or like because for me I'm so used to being on stage. I'm so used to being in front of people. I'm just like, everybody wants to do this and everybody knows how to like shut these things off. And I, mm-hmm. you know, and I watched you come in and you like skyrocketed. You were shining bright. And when you had your first, you know, guy basically crossed the line <laughs> instantly with you and then you having to deal with it and you've like fucking crashed. You emotionally crashed. And I was like- I and all I wanted to do was just like pick you up and be like, no, it's it's OK. You got this. You got this. You're strong. You have this. But I didn't know that that was something that you hadn't dealt with. I didn't understand that you didn't have those tools. And so Mm-mm. watching you go through that was it's no. inspiring and also just like truly tragic. It's it's tough. I, I have dealt with like serious mental health issues since I was eight years old. And this is something that, like, this this shit is a part of what makes me up and a part of why it's not easy for me to say, like, I can't do a competition because right now, at the point of my life, because I'll think I'm worthless as a human being if I lose. <laughs> That's the stuff that I couldn't say that easily to you in our last interview. But after mm-hmm. watching the one with Minneapolis, I was like, fuck it. I'm crying at this Minneapolis interview because somebody's saying the shit that, like, actually needs to be that is actually said, and I didn't say the reality of the situation, like with Minnie Payton before. I look fine, I speak fine. People don't know that like, I just have a lot of, I'm very, very sensitive. I overthink things, sometimes to counteract overthinking them in the wrong way, I'm overthinking them in the right way. <laughs> it's like my, my intuition is messed up. But so people don't, well, sometimes just try to assume I should be on a certain path. And like, I'm trying to make sure I last. That's one thing that happened with you is I was like, I was like, yes, when I first got started with Twitch, I was like, I don't know if this is going to work out. And you were like, well, you kind of have to if you want to hit affiliate. And I was like, no, I kind of don't have to or I'll never fucking stream again. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, I may not stream if I don't make this enjoyable for myself. But I had to like, you know, because you were just assuming that like I would like everybody else to an extent. And yeah. I think there are people like me, but that doesn't mean that, like, that applies necessarily. I'm not saying I'm alone necessarily, but, like, it's also not necessarily the default mentally. Sure. Well, and I think that, like, all of us, you know, as my uh, mental health video that I did has hit so many different people, it's it's the first video that I've put out that has, like, a thousand views on its own merit you know like it's it like it didn't have a big streamer like pushing it you know even though pe- you know people uh are involved with it, it they w- it wasn't the main focus um and it made me realize because I, I was afraid that i was putting myself out there putting you out there i was putting any you know any meanies out there in a way mm-hmm. that we're vulnerable and like yeah. we're gonna get shit on i that's what my initial fear was and it made me realize uh that the miniature community is full of a lot of a lot of broken people like we are we we are not as good as we like to say that we are or like that we like to front that we are and um and we're not we're really not alone and while we might suffer from different things um it it made me realize that like i need to be less cavalier pushing people to do certain things <laughs> i need i need to figure out what they are on their level so i can actually benefit them because my my default is uh fuck it we'll do it live we'll go we'll push it we'll push through i'm you know mm-hmm. i'm the the punk rock diy everything shit so all we got is forward you know like we got we got to go up i'm here for it even <laughs> if i can't so, yeah. yeah i, I appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> but like it, it made me realize though that like i i never really i never really took your autonomy in the situation very seriously because i didn't i didn't understand what 
what I didn't put you in these situations, but I also encouraged you to walk into situations that maybe you weren't totally ready. And, um, and that's an interesting spot to be because I never, never would want to hurt you or put, put you in a situation where you're uncomfortable. But I think at the end of the day, so much has been gained from, from <laughs> gained from the pain. You know, you, I have yeah, seen you so. grow so much right now. It's, it's, and I've seen you say things like recently, like, you know what, your reaction to that, you said like really recently, like your reaction to that makes sense based on the trauma you've experienced. And yeah. I was like, he gets it. So like, yeah, that's, a, that's a valuable thing that like not everybody gets they don't get it like especially if you just endured like long-term emotional abuse which i did yeah like it tears you down people don't understand if they haven't experienced it that there's certain things that are part of their makeup that they were taught like life is valuable things will get better you can recover if you fail those are not things that i was taught so when i get back like crit critiques on my art i fall apart Still, like I said, I'm working on it. Like, like if it's not perfect, I still am learning that like things can get better. I can overcome failure. That's stuff that like isn't taught to everybody, believe it or not. Yeah. Well, and like, uh, you know, you and I are very similar in the um, mentality that if we aren't the, cen the center of attention trying to entertain everybody, that like the... Mm -hmm. um, that maybe we don't have the same sort of autonomy in the space and maybe we're not appreciated in the same way. Um, and that's, that's a really difficult one to wrap your head around. If you were never left to feel afraid of not performing and like, there's also, yeah, in my case, it's also like, if I'm not performing, if I'm quiet, then people have a second to start thinking like, right. What's wrong with it's not that good. Oh, maybe her art like isn't <laughs> where if I'm talking and I'm like, ah, like da, da, da. listen to this Jeff and the, like this these guys we got this alert. About my dog. Like, <laughs> just, you know, like that's reality is like that quietness is like scary. Now that's something that you taught me as well. Even if I weren't talking to you, you would come up in this interview so much, which is funny. <laughs> you also taught me to like be okay with the quiet miss a little bit because you said like I was like worried I'll say something and you were like you're gonna say it when you feel like you have to fill negative space that's when you're gonna like really get yourself in trouble and that was that's the <laughs> best twitch advice of all time right because I would have <laughs> like you want to hear a hot topic <laughs> like, no I have Tourette's like I don't know <laughs> like, yeah it's yeah so like about like I don't know just the worst thing in the world. <laughs> it's it's easily one of the things that gets me in trouble, and it made me realize when I was when I was on Useless Wizard show and doing it live, having a live interview, that was so hard. I'm not gonna lie, that was kind of a fucking nightmare. <laughs> and, and I'm glad that I did it to get it out and feel it, what it's like to be on the other side. But like I hated doing it live. I felt like I, I was like, if I don't have something profound to say right now, I'm failing everybody. And I felt like I got really tense. And you can if you go back and listen to it, you can hear my voice like rattle all the time, all the way through. And it's because I forgot that it's okay to shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's it's okay to sit in your thought and hold it for a second. And so I was just like blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it was horrible. I think it was good. You said a lot of really good stuff. I loved the interview, but at the same time, I'm just going to be honest with you. A little bit, I heard that nervousness in you, and I was like, <laughs> how you like it now? Right? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, now you know. I it's couldn't help. I'm so sorry that was my reality, but that was my truth was like, my li living my truth was like, he, now you get it. Yeah. Oh, I do. And um, like I knew asking people these things. I knew doing interviews with people would be hard. That's why I like the format that I have to be like as loose, as easy as possible. I don't want to put people into harm's way. But also, like I like to ask hard questions. I like to get to know the people. And so you need to have like a different amount of um, 
uh, care going into that conversation. And the way Useless Wizard does it is he wants to know certain things about people consistently. So his show has like a format and mm -hmm. you can follow it. And each time you can go back and you're like, I'm going to learn really, really interesting topics 100% of the time. You know, like I love talking with Duff. Duff and I spent like 45 minutes talking about metal. <laughs> we didn't even talk <laughs> about <sure>. mini painting. <laughs> I fast forwarded because I don't care about metal. Right? To be honest. <laughs> Like, and that's okay. Like, like, it's not always for me. I like metal, but I just don't care about it as a topic. Right. I'm like, I love you. I like Duff a lot, but like, metal. For, and that's okay. I'll, that's the fun part is I never know what's going to come up. Do you mean fucking episodes of yours I cried watching? It's great. It's, uh, I'm glad that you have that experience uh, because I sometimes wonder... You know, especially now that like the big episodes are over, like like real real talk of content creation. Once the fucking afterglow is gone, and you're left with the like stark reality that you can't always have a you know a black magic craft interview be like the one that's like hitting hard and everybody's responding. And you have to do, and this is no shade to the rest of us, real people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. it, it's 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 hard. Because the conversation dies down, people aren't as thrilled to like talk with you about what you did, and um, and I have had to deal with that quite a bit, like the the shock of that being gone, um, and 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 renegotiating my relationship with making content because I want to keep on doing it, but it um some it's sometimes way harder now, fun and uh and that has been um something I've had to deal with recently, like. And it's not that the interviews are always fun. It's the editing. It's the putting it up. It's the like, like the turn of it That's, all the time. It's just it's, it's so a, exhausting to me. It's so editing. exhausting. <laughs> That's why I originally wanted thought about doing YouTube, and then I just wanted to like hang out with fr friends at some point, and then I watched some <laughs> Twitch and I was like, "Hey, never mind, it's boring." But like eventually, I peer pressure from you, Kefa, and Numeta brought me around to Twitch streaming. Yeah, and you know we but all have is, uh, so many di different like ideas of what a Twitch stream is, and like you know, Numeta has this really intense stream, like almost um almost combative with his audience. You know, like like he he pushes <laughs> that I I have like the dirtiest mouth. All my worst jokes come out in that one. Like I am a different person in Numeta's chat. It's hilarious actually it's yeah funny. it's so great it's fun oh it's so fun i i like watching his stuff i don't i don't get to watch it near as much as i want same with kefa uh now that he's back doing it he had to take a little hiatus there and that when you know all, all of us our lives changed once you know we started getting back to um work and having to negotiate family work and the hobby and twitch and every everything and uh and so i love how kefa has this totally different vibe of part tutorial part just talking dungeons and dragons <laughs> yeah like creating lore for the characters while he's going yeah like why do you guys think this shield would be like this like i've seen him do that it's really fucking cool but like it's it's a totally different vibe than anything i would do like i don't even almost talk about mini painting when i'm streaming <laughs> the, i remember your first streams you were so focused on tutorial and i was like you don't have to tell everybody why you're using it. like truth truth be told we don't really care that much partially because i wanted to eventually teach classes mm -hmm. i don't i still am terrible at describing what i do so like <laughs> but you think about the horrible things that i'm not gonna i'm not gonna regret that because who knows what would have flown out of my mouth which verbal diarrhea if I was not describing which yellow. So no. just at that time, that's what I needed. No, and, and, and you and right. you shouldn't and never regret anything. Like you've you've learned your lessons. You have um you know, grown to be a really good performer. Like that's the the cool thing. I've watched you go from someone who is really timid about it to you're you're just flat out a good performer in front of people. And and I know you're an introvert and I know that that is hard for you. I'm actually an extrovert. <laughs> 
I just get so drained from it. I put so much of my battery on. It's like a phone app and like the apps just sucking all your battery. battery. But like, so I turn so much on that like it takes me forever to recharge. We're the same personality type, aren't we? We're We're ENFPs. Mm -hmm. Fuck, that's right. I totally forgot. For some reason I was thinking, but she's an introvert and that's why. No, you're right. It's hard. It's hard for extrovert. (laughs) It's so hard, yeah. And but like, ENFP, because I'm all about MBTI. Sorry if you're critical of it. That's just it's helped me in certain ways to like learn about different people. Yeah. ENFPs are most likely to be mistaken for introverts. Yeah. Because they're very on and then off. Yeah. Well, the the F part, and and for anybody who's never taken their Myers Briggs uh, personality test, like it's there's some free ones online. They don't give you a ton of insight, but like. Just Human knowing metrics one's pretty good, just so you know. which one is human metrics, human metrics. Okay. We should put that in the show notes because, uh, <laughs> I, um, I use it as like a way to like find a baseline with people because sometimes you just like, especially introverts who like can't really understand why they don't do well in social s- scenarios. You're like, this is you're not wrong there's no such thing as a wrong personality type there's just understanding how people interact in social scenarios and and in like jobs you know they have completely different motivation so like certain people are going to be more uh concerned about with like ritual and routine some people want change and just to like be in the moment um those are two completely different things you and i are going to have like a lot of curiosity enthusiasm where some people take that intensity and like turn it inward and they have like these, the really cool, I think Eeny Minis has that, the opposite one of us. And that's why we like her. <laughs> I think, I think you're right. I, I think that she is uh, an introvert. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like uh, not just an introvert, but like her style of intuition is like really interesting. It's cool. It's different than ours. And I love I, it. I think she's a J. Like, I think that mm-hmm. she, she's got the hardcore J vibes going on there. She's got an NTJ vibe. I'm putting that out there. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what my wife is. Um, and I love people with that personality type because they, um, they're like, the, like in the, in the Hedwig and the angry inch origin of love, the two halves that go together, mm-hmm. uh, the INTJ is the person who makes the ENFP tolerable to be around. <laughs> But we open them up. We go like, hey, cranky pants, how about this? And they're like, you're annoying. Wait, you're kind of smart too, like, believe it or not. The perfect INTJ ENFP couple of all time is Pinky and the Brain. Dude, totally. 100%. (laughs) Yeah. And like, it's tough to be like, I'm fucking Pinky. But like, you know what? Here I am and I'm going to cheer you up. (laughs) Zoink. (laughs) Snaws. But we like also people, I also, both of us, I believe, value people who are honest and tell you where they stand with you. If they're too polite to, like, tell you anything, then, like, oh, it's tough to get a vibe. It's hard to, like, trust them to an extent or, like, yeah. I don't know. They don't want to fight for what's right versus what's making everybody comfortable. But there's a place for those people in this world, too. I just have a tough time with them. Yeah, true. 100%. I usually make them very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I, we, I used to do this thing with girlfriends and I still do it with my wife, although we don't, we don't, it's not the game. I used to have the game called brutal honesty and, um, brutal honesty is never a good idea for people who aren't truly in love. Like we may love each other right now, but like many like relationships ended pretty like prematurely because I'm like, what do you think about this thing? <laughs> and they're like, brutal honesty? I'm like, yeah, let's have it. And you're like, oh, I don't actually like you either. <laughs> we had brutal honesty with a friend, and I was like, she's like, tell me something you don't like about me. And I was like, your hair's really greasy. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, what just need to be said? Like, I tried not to tell her, but she was forcing it out of me. Yeah, and, and you just cut her And now she goes, one. yeah, I washed my hair before I saw you. I mean, I, I love those relationships and I love, um, I love the fact that you never quite know what you're going to get from people who are honest. Like, you know, you, you, you at least know that the baseline is, uh, a baseline of respect and that, and that the honesty is the respect of your time and autonomy. And, um, it's just really hard when you know people 
could actually benefit from the things that you're saying and they take it personally that's where i have problems uh because it's i'm never trying to hurt anybody's feelings but also like like you know i had i, I did a, i did an interview the other night that i'm probably just not going to air because half the time i just was like what the fuck are you doing like what are you doing why are you doing this and the the end result just was, was me sounding like a dick the entire time and uh, and i don't really want to promote that but also like i was being 100 percent honest with the person in the middle of it you know i was just like i don't I don't get this and like you know you are and i are friends we've been friends for a while so i'm talking to you as a friend why and um and you know there was never anything that really satisfied that so as i walked away from the interview instead of like feeling like i learned something about somebody I just felt like i beat them up and then that's it you know i'm just like oh I don't want it. That's not the pot. That's if the show gets heavy, I want it to get heavy because we're uh, understanding things about each other, not be yeah. b- because like, I'm just like fucking like, get up. An intervention. Like, right, right. Exactly. A one, one intervention surprise. Yeah. Like, Shit or get off the pot, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's, I don't know. I love giving feedback to people and kind of helping them, but they do have to want it. But also like, it does help to have like super good solutions. Like you have to provide those solutions. You can't just tell them the problem and also like tell them why they're, they matter and why they would like do well in those situations. Like advice is like my favorite thing, way more than money painting. Just like <laughs> helping people find out like how to grow and like what holds them back. And then mini painting are my two favorite things in the whole world. Uh, you know, I have <laughs> often thought that you're, Twitch stream could go to a just chatting sort of like, uh, like, um, <laughs> I went, I was just like Oprah, uh, Sally, Jesse, Raphael, sort of like shows where we talk about topics and we actually analyze them on, you know, like that nineties oh, reality stuff. Oh my gosh. I get to wear big red glasses. Fuck yeah. And I get some lettuce behind me. Lattice. Okay, I might come up with like a talk show background now. Like that might happen. Let's do. it. Edie Mays just had me put mental health in there because she was like, "If you're good at that, do it." And I was like, "Okay." Yeah. So I put mental health in my tags now. Uh, I don't know I, if anybody stopped in because of I've it, been really. doing mental health in my tags for about six weeks now, um, or a little longer. Whenever I started doing the mental health video, so actually like three months now, um, and it has brought people in. They're like, why is this? Why do you, are you using the mental t- health tag right now? And I was like, because this is a safe space. If you're having a bad day and you want to hang out with people that are having a good day or are working at having a better day, that's what we're doing here. Sometimes we talk about shit that is really hard. And sometimes we, we go places that a lot of people are uncomfortable about, but we're yeah. always here to support people. And I've had just a couple people stick around and like, they're like, I know nothing about mini painting, but I'm really glad I came in here today. And the, like, I don't even remember their names, but I hope that that's something that like, you know, they went and carried that the rest of their day. You know, like it felt, it yeah. felt like I did work, you know, something good. Yeah. I feel like I, I've said this before, like it's something UFC fighter says, but like, I'm an expert in mental health for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> 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 expert for like on the opposite side like i have a bunch of tools when i'm feeling down oh my god i'm like well that one can't apply to me no no <laughs> but, like, but like a lot of times like i got advice from people there was somebody who came in and they were like i'm autistic i can't stop thinking about how i need to sell these minis i can't sleep over it if i don't sell my minis and i wasn't like oh dude that's weird i was like you know what you're gonna have to accept it You're going to have to live with it. And then if that happens, that's good. But you need to like think of the darkest state. Those don't sell. Picture the worst case scenario and then just embrace it. Embrace it. And then if they do sell, that'd be great. Yeah. Like, so I I had an answer and I was like, hey, this is kind of cool. Like, instead (laughs) of like, just being like, oh shit. Like, no, I get it. Like, I get that not being able to sleep over something because it's just. You have messaged me multiple times where something completely insignificant to me, like, like totally, like, I can't even remember it. That's how insignificant it is. I like, I can't even remember the exact reasons why you would message me in the morning. And you're like, I was up all night thinking about this one thing. And I was just like, holy shit, this is totally different. This is over this face. 
this green base. The green base. <laughs> you were like, you take criticism really uh, harsh. And I was like, um, by the way, it's 7 a.m. and I'm awake because I couldn't stop thinking about this base. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I was painting it, like, couldn't think of anything else. It's And I... I obsess about things in uh, all the time, but they're they're different. It's not about that stuff. It's about it's about the idea that I had of which like are so like big picture idea that I can't even like remotely begin to understand where I'm gonna like get to, and it's it's absolutely destroying me. <laughs> like I'm I'm like like what am I doing right now? And it, it, so much so that like I'll get stuck in like self doubt cycles where I'm just like, am I even doing this right? Like, it, it, is my yeah. goal? Am I even on the right path for the goal? You know, and like that is that that's where I get stuck. Like, I don't like all, whatever I'm doing on my like the project that I'm working on doesn't matter. Like that that I, I, like I sleep like a baby over, but I'm wondering if the uh, you know, the, the direction I take a conversation has wrecked my entire trajectory of the future of the channel, you know? So I feel the same way about that model. So my brain goes to the same thing. I'm having existential. So this green isn't necessarily perfect. Uh, what if I disappoint the client? What if this doesn't look good for other people? Now I'm not a good mini painter. So it's the same thing. It's still right. the existential, like, oh my God, all everything, like the spiral of like, is, am I on the trajectory that I want to be on if I can't figure this out? Am I exposing a flaw in my repertoire because I haven't focused enough on bases? Like, well, and you and I, like, we, we've had a, quite a history with like pushing each other uh, and like, I got this. I got this little guy from you, uh, and, <laughs> and I, I love this little guy. And I love the story of this little guy. And I keep it close. So, like, when people ask me about what it's like to, uh, um, you know, paint something that you're uncomfortable with, like I look at this, and like to to anybody who's taken a look at the screen, this is just uh, a hero forge demon holding two flames, and it's it's just it's just a demon. You know, there's. Nothing super special about him. He's got some wings, and um, and, and I won it in a in a contest fair and square. I did it with four percent. <laughs> like yeah, like it wasn't just us like you know working against the 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 audience because I think you had like thirty people in your chat. I was like, yeah, well, you won it fair yeah. and square for sure. And uh, and I messaged you and I was like. I, I have always appreciated your work. I think that you do things that are really um, beautiful. You understand highlights. You understand like color transitions and and like the value of like uh, just like tonal value. Like you understand that, but you had been going into such like a desaturated phase and like you'd done um, like a, a frost giant or something. And like, it was just these like grayish blue. And I was like, it was it was cool, but I was like, I would have loved to see maybe a little bit more like like you know primary color bl blue, just something a little bit yeah. more yeah. saturated and vibey with it. Even though like it felt lived in, like if this was going to be in the real world, it would probably look like that. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> but these are like little tiny like little pieces of magic. I wanted to I wanted to see you reclaim a little bit of what I think makes miniature painting fun, and it's just the audacity of of brightness. There's like. Yeah, we we walk right. in a world that's so fucking gray right now. <laughs> like every modern movement is gray. I've got gray cabinets. I painted a wall gray. I have, you know, like it's all gray. I love gray. Oh, you love man, gray. I, can't help it. I love gray. I've got... But but also like I uh, like red lipstick and then gray. Like <laughs> right, the splashy so, color. Okay. You got this. But you are right. It is a lot of gray. It's a I lot thought of you gray. meant metaphorically, but you meant literally, and that's true. Mm -hmm. You are right. Yeah, and and it's one of those things. Being a picture framer, I am always talking with a designer that's like, "We did a great house again." I'm like, "Yeah, you did a great house again. Great, awesome. Like, come up with an original idea, please." You know, like, and I get it. That's what everybody's doing. There's kind of this like weird push in design right now to make everybody's house look like hotels, and I fucking hate it yeah. <laughs> to the to the max. I'm like. There's no character to it. Like they look clean, they look slick, and they look um, efficient. <laughs> but like, oh yeah, Mine's I would... super bright. I've got like bright red, bright teal, and then gray. Like, but like it's very 
<laughs> pops. Super yeah. Zealous. So as a challenge, you know, like I, you, you were going to pay for the STL and print this model and paint it for me of which like, that's a lot that like, I don't think anybody understands that when you win something from a Twitch contest where somebody has painted this for you, that is a huge gift. Huge. But I should not have given that out. As a kid. No, you much. shouldn't have. This is how slow I paint. It's like a week for the work. Like I just gave away a week work. Like yeah. I can't do I can't do a monthly like paint a mini at my regular level or I will lose a quarter of my commission time. <laughs> right? <laughs> and I I mean like that's a thing that like maybe if you like I'm going to put 1 hour into this and like you like grunge painted it and be like it's going to be nasty, yeah. it's going to be raw. <laughs> yeah. But you don't paint that way. And you don't think about minis that way. You don't think about your work in a way that is, uh, like, sometimes I think that my uh, level of painting is like the McDonald's of painting. It's like, it's consistent. I'm turning it out and it's, you know, and it's done, you know, the same way, pretty similarly. Um, you are like the five-star chef who's thinking oh. about the flavors and like the way that you you take way more time than i think most people do i do yours took about 18 hours 18 hours that's incredible mm -hmm. that's an incredible amount of time and thank you they I like learning, though, too. i was learning to be fair because you challenged me to do it 90s comic book style saturation yeah yeah and i was like if you won you're not supposed to be challenging me you're supposed to be receiving but i also knew that you know people's areas for growth and that like i was like he absolutely like this is a good idea fuck Heath. like <laughs> i have to do this motherfucker like yes. like son of a son of a bitch he's right i'm gonna need to do this well and it, it was one of those things that like i love watching you paint and i love the choices that you do i love like you are so bold with the way that you just glazing colors and like you do it like you have been doing it for a million years it's just like i'm working on this thing it's every stroke is a stroke of confidence um and then you're like i'm gonna pull out the airbrush and and, and i'm just like yeah. what are you fucking doing like i can't do that i am not that oh, brave. Really? no i like i'm that makes me feel good because like <laughs> i feel timid about my painting that's why it takes so long well but you I mean, you did a you did a non-metallic non metal fucking Gilliman that was like <laughs> one of the craziest things I've ever seen anybody do. I can't believe I did that. When that thing came, I was like, I mean, I saw pictures, but once I started really getting in there, I was like, there really is no negative space, huh? There's just zero. A lot of details. Yeah. Okay. And so, like, you're crazy. I'm like, am I? And then I started messaging people. Nope, you're right. I'm crazy. Yeah. You, you, I think like two nights into it, you're like, I'm already 18 hours into it. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, you're like, no shit. Like, whoops. <laughs> well, oops. But it was fun, though. And you, and you did a great job. And, and you know, at the right angle, it, it feels right. Like you, you nailed that look of what metallic, you know, full gold non-metallic metal would do. But I mean, I think you put 80 hours into it and that's not, I, a, put, I only put 50 hours into it. Thank you very much. Yeah, but I do you, track it, but you, all my stuff. you worried about it for another 20. So like, I think you should count that as well. <laughs> yeah. I do count somewhat of that stuff. If I'm okay, like gathering pictures and stuff. So sometimes in my time that is included, like or like when I lay it out and things like that. Yeah. yeah. I don't usually count like lost sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I do bill for it. Good. Well, I mean you should. <laughs> so one of the things that happened when you challenged yourself was uh and this was a, I'd never seen you do this before. I'd never seen you have that moment of like normally when you get pushed you shut down and this was like the first time that i'd seen you like instead of shutting down you got mad which was really inspiring to see like you were just like god damn it heath i didn't want to know that this looked good and you sent me a photo and i was like holy shit you are fucking doing this you're like pushing yeah. the greens you're pushing the purple <laughs> <laughs> i just got my filthy mouth out thanks mom putting that up <laughs> 
but I mean, like, it was inspiring seeing you take a second to look at your work, and uh, and and while not everything has to be '90s comic book style uh, ab- uh, absurdity, it was cool seeing you push that, and your pieces afterwards, I think, benefited from it. They had oh my this God. like so whole I had new started. Life. We're good. We're good. I started a wizard before then, and I went back to it. And I was like, I had to repaint this whole thing. I started to try to paint it, and it didn't look right at all. I was like, fuck, so I had to go repaint the whole thing. And I did a Lord of the Rings commission after that, and people were like, holy shit, what did you do? And I'm like, I don't know. But, like, you recalibrated my brain so that the saturation looks entirely different. Sure. Do you think, and this here's here's a weird curveball, hardball question. Do you think that your mental health uh, affects the way that you look at your model that you're working at? Like when you look at it, is it are you seeing like a clear vision of like the color, or do you think as like things get more into like a gray or the dark area mentally, you tend to focus more on like a desaturated. Uh, not black and white, but more like mm-hmm. values. Like you're very like, contrasty, but like the the, the color saturation. More value as opposed to hue. Saturation hue, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think so. I don't know. I'm not sure. It's interesting. I, I just got thinking I mean, about that I because feel that, like I have a tougher time envisioning the whole thing, maybe, and I maybe I rely on like I'm more like less likely to take chances. Okay. So I probably more rely on that. But then again, I'm not sure. I think I actually was re- severely depressed when I painted yours. And then I was in severe depression and it turned out really <laughs> vivid. So who fucking knows? I know I take pictures all throughout my process so I can look at those because it kind of tricks my brain into like using the more rational part versus the more creative part, whichever one that is. I don't know left and right very well. <laughs> and then I do side by side throughout my whole process to see if things are actually improving or not. Mm-hmm. So I'll just like go in my little collage app, and I'm like, okay, this was last week. This is this week. Okay, all right. Like, nice. You see me do those like quite a bit, and I send them to you. Like you do. Like, you said s- before Heath, after Heath. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I appreciate that. But like when when you when you were painting mine, that was also like right at your first hiatus from. Sh- streaming because like you yeah. you walked into a zone where mentally it was way way more challenging to balance it and uh and understand um you know where you were at so like it took you a while to get back to mine and get back to on twitch because there were there was but i was also physically sick for six weeks oh my god right right <laughs> so like basically during our first interview, I had so, like I actually had something, possibly COVID, maybe not. It was a respiratory infection. I never had issues like that. Shortness of breath that lasted six weeks. Started Twitch streaming, going awesome for six weeks. So, suddenly, I'm like, I gotta take my bra off. What's going on? Like this is a, why is my chest so tight? And it happened again. Or I couldn't like walk to the back door without getting out of breath. I like so I couldn't talk. Right. I, I had to stop Twitch streaming. And like I wanted to, but then I got depressed after that. Like, cause eventually, like after so long, then I want I could like physically come back, but I was like, it was t- it was so long and ongoing, and it just like bummed me out so bad that it just took me out of my stride entirely. Yeah. Well, and you were you were your second time you were sick was like another five weeks. It wasn't like it was. yeah. And I remember you going to the doctor and being like. I hope they can figure this out because this is like it, it, even if it's not COVID, it's got, it's got to be something that has to be uh, messed with because this is this is devastating to watch uh, a it vital human awful. being be wiped out. It, I couldn't get the like just you know this, but like I couldn't get the COVID test at all during that first little bit. Right. So I don't know, but whatever it was, it came back and I got eight tests. It wasn't, but. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Like the reality of whatever it was sucked. It like it was just tough. Like I couldn't like mop the floor or like do anything. Like it just I've never had respiratory issues. Yeah. But and it sucked and I was like, oh my god, I'm like like I was telling you, like I'm just finally like achieving some cool 
success. I'm getting like this, this feedback. Like I'm having a great fucking time. I got shirts. I got emotes like, and I can't st- like you had said, like, I understand your choice when I was like, my stream is on indefinite hiatus. Yeah. And, um, I was like, it's not a choice. I can't talk. I had gone too long on a stream that I was like, okay, I can do it now. And I couldn't, I never got a break from the shortness of breath for a week. I was like, I literally can't, like I could have put the camera on, but I couldn't speak that long before it was just taken out of me. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, I always am in this weird world of like, so you're sick fucking figure out how to do another way like like you know if i if i lost an arm i would still figure out ways to do my stuff because uh the second i don't do the things that make me happy even if it's not to the level that i want that's when i my my personal value starts like i start spiraling um and i remember like i one time i used to do lots of drugs and party and smokes i smoked unfiltered cigarettes they were still still i still dream about them um and I remember I had been sick for about five weeks and, um, and I went and did a show, uh, with my death metal band. And like, I was at that point where like, I did like the deep death metal vocals that I didn't even have to try to hit anymore because my... that, is, that moment, that's always <laughs> fun. Like if you're sick and I can suddenly sing like, some... <sighs> yeah. And it was there. Like, I didn't even have to try. Like I was just, I sounded like shit. And when I went to, um, the doctor, they put me on like three different antibiotics just to like, they're like, you are really sick. <laughs> and, uh, and, and after that, that was when I started having to, um, you know, take a little bit better care of myself. Uh, I had a, I wasn't doing drugs and I wasn't partying hard, but I ended up, uh, doing a show like 10 years later and I, I had to sleep on the floor of a bar and, cause that's oh where like, God. That and I had the same sort of respiratory infection after that. Uh, and, as a previous alcoholic, I know that feeling of like sleeping in weird areas and like feeling odd and like just going through anyway, and you feel run down. You just I know it. I drank a forty of King Cobra that night just so I could sleep. <laughs> I, I I get it. We both have that in common as well. We've done that one. Uh, and when I got back to St. Louis. I went to the urgent care, uh, and they were like, well, you seem fine. You don't really have a fever. You know, you're, you're like, and then I, I had like one of those, like a uh, accidental, like <laughs> coughs and the doctor mm-hmm. and the nurse both looked at me like, we need to get you a, a chest x-ray right now. <laughs> Cause I was like, whatever was going on was so bad. And it, what do you do? With <laughs> you know? I pushed myself too hard actually during that one. St- so when I realized I ha- couldn't come back for a while, I said, I'm going to stream for two hours, right at two hours. I get a raid with a hundred people from Zambies ah! and like, to go another hour. And that just fucked me. Oh. Thank you. Zambies. Like for real, like it was awesome. She wasn't like, you know what? I bet Minmax is really sick right now. And was just like, <laughs> it was great, but I just went too hard. That's yeah. when I was like, this is this really sucks. Like this is way worse than I thought. So now that you've you've had a bunch of things happen with Twitch and just like health and you know stalker tactics of men, which um are things that like guys we gotta yeah. like we gotta have like a, a a moment to just say like you know we've we've always said this before, but like seriously understand that whenever you message somebody like. You might feel that you're doing something completely normal, <laughs> but it comes out very weird to us. And while we want to be people pleasers and you know make sure that your you know fans understand right. that the, the more you push, the more you're putting us in very uncomfortable situations. And then being a woman on the other side of that, you take it too very, far almost instantly. Very uncomfortable. And and recently the the thing that happened recently was somebody was just like misusing my drawing stuff and having me I'll just be I'm not gonna say their name, but like they were having me draw furry stuff, which I didn't really know about that at first. Like I was just like, Oh, it's a fox girl, it's super cute. And then it just like every time they would hit that channel reward, they had another girl. And then I like they said like, Hey Min Max, how furry should I get today? Yeah. And they would private message me about this, which they weren't never overt, but it was making me uncomfortable. And finally, I was like, it's making me uncomfortable. Like, 
I had to say stop and he still didn't stop. And I was like, you know what? I've been trying to be nice and like gently break this to this person for months now. <laughs> right. And yeah, he was like, no, I, I, I'm shocked that you would like, I was bothering you. But like, I literally said like, stop. Nobody wants this. I don't like drawing this. I'm not okay with it. Right. And that's when I realized, like, and I wish I had done it earlier, but, like, I just felt so used and, like, disgusted. And I think that there's a sense, I don't think he would have done it to a guy because I don't think he, he, I think he would fear a guy that he would be like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah. Like, no, I'm not drawing your fucking animal girl. And But, like, I'm, and he was sort trying of to fetishized be nice. you doing it, you know? Like... I think so. I think there was a sense of, like, she doesn't like doing it. It's bothering her. Ha <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And like, I just felt like so used that it almost made me leave Twitch like that. Yeah. that within the next couple of weeks, I was like, I hate fucking Twitch right now because he was my biggest fan. He was. So it was like when my biggest fans are like abusing it, like, like, cause you pay me $25 a month or whatever. Like you get that. Like it, yeah. it sucked it out of me. Well, I and, just like suddenly well, lost all like hope for anything. And it's such Wait, a what? weird thing because you think about that and you're like twenty five dollars is so much money. Um, and and while it's not an insignificant amount of money for the amount of uh, emotional like baggage that came with you having to deal with like the the people that have affected you the most have also been your highest pay paying people. They're always of all which. Of them. I don't. I don't have to deal with that. None of none of my people want to give me well, a lot of money. Not all of my good fans are creeps, but right. all of the creeps have been big fans. Have been big fans. But most, I want to say like not all my biggest fans are creeps. No, and by any means, but like, and some of our biggest fans don't give us any money. Like the, the our best fans yeah. don't give us money, and that's totally fine. That is everybody gets that. That's fine. Right, and that's something that I've had to realize that like. Sub people, just because they're subbing, while it is very special and thank you so much, it also, there is a level of, um, you know, like, you you are beholden to me that comes, especially at the, the higher price points. And, I, and while they don't do that to me as much, I've seen it happen to exclusively women. And that is something that has really bothered. You know, it's an odd dynamic and it's... It's, it would be easier if it was over. Right. Covert toxicity is way harder to identify. It would suddenly be like somebody messaged me and I'd get a sick feeling to my stomach. The last one, like I was trying to just like use all my tools of like gray rock. Gray rock is where you like just pretend to be a gray rock and you're like super <laughs> uninteresting. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Like, and it also can make toxic, toxic behavior escalate. Cause they're mm. like, I'm not getting attention. Pay attention to me. Pay, like they can kind of notice it and they're not getting it. Yeah. But like, I didn't also want to admit that like I was in a toxic relationship with a viewer, like a friendship, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, because this person would literally say like, I value you as a person. Like you matter to me. You can come talk to me anytime you have problems. So then when they were also like abusing me on stream, it was really hard for me to like validate that because I really gave a shit and I didn't want to hurt that person's feelings. And then later they admitted like, oh, yeah, I just like to fucking with her. And I didn't know she'd get mad. Yeah. And, and like I've, I, I read the messages. I was in streams. I watched you say N enough's enough. And like. Obviously, it was abusive behavior and it was just like and all those things knew I'm sensitive to. That's different. That is a little bit different. I think it is. But, like, you shouldn't abuse anybody. But at the same time, like, that's just not okay. And, like, you can really just ruin a person's day. So it is a lot of men. But I will absolutely say, like, it's not most men. But, like, it just takes a couple bad people to just fuck a day up. Right. Like, just fuck your night up. Where I would just get off stream and just be like, okay, so I didn't... Okay, so he's not getting it, so I need to explain this a different way. Like, okay, like, I lost sleep over this. Yeah. And it sucked. It fucking sucked. Like, I, like, had to talk myself into, like, getting back to it and, like, figuring out what I cared about. And it's going to happen again. That's the part that really sucks, is I know it will. Yeah. Well, let's let's change the tone of this a little bit. Like, 
<laughs> talked about like the things that hurt uh, in Twitch streaming. But now that we, you and I have done it long enough, I think we have a bunch of really good insight to Twitch streaming as well. And sure. for anybody like it, I don't want to come off sounding like Twitch is the fucking worst and it's full of nothing but toxic behavior. And like, cause I know I can be highly critical of Twitch. Um, and to a point where like one night I was having a conversation with Eenie Meenies and Zambies about it. And I think they were taking it personally as I was like, the Twitch platform fucking sucks for content creators. Like, like if we were playing video games and getting paid, you know, the, the amount that we're doing because we're liter literally playing video games is a totally different story than us fucking working our asses off to entertain people while painting. Like, and I like was bouncing off of Twitch hard. I, my uh, existential crisis was not whether or not um, it was like a uh, uh, toxic environment, like via the crowd. It was the fact that I wasn't feeling valued as a creator and, and, yeah, and it was just can, a platform. Sure. And so now I'm actually, I'm at peace. <laughs> I'm at peace with what Twitch is. I still have a lot of complaints, but yeah, yeah. I, I have some really interesting insight that I think like for, for the last portion of this, we should talk about if you want to get into Twitch streaming, let's, let's give like positive advice to people getting in. I will, but also do. Or I did say it changed the fact that I don't hate myself anymore. So I feel like I did say some very good stuff on Twitch earlier. You you <laughs> had like, the, the best. The connections arc. are amazing. <laughs> yeah, the connections are and just a lot. So if it's good, it's a lot. If it's bad, it's devastating. It's just like it. It is what it is. But like, it's a super fun community. I love going to people's chats. I didn't watch Twitch before I was on Twitch. It's an awesome community, and people are extremely helpful. The thing yes. with heels coming into my stream and taking the time to help me with that gamer dad one time i asked him about um a bust how to like mount a bust i'd never done it before he was like hey get in discord and just got on video and showed me how to fucking do it <laughs> gamer dad all gamer dad holy shit like the nicest like i was like that's like a lot that's like a lot but like all of these people are just incredibly helpful yeah. Um, there's, I mean, I'm sure there's people who aren't, but I'm just, I have, like, I very much appreciate the good experiences and the good connections. How about this? Like, a lot of, um, I couldn't, I live in, like, the Detroit area. I couldn't find people to hang out with in my area. And, like, Twitch, I was like, oh, turns out all the Detroit painters, everybody in Michigan is on Twitch. Right? Like, just critical. <laughs> All of them. It's Just it's uh, almost everybody. all of my the people I like to watch are in Detroit. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is happening here? And I was and I was like actively being like, I can't find people to paint with or talk about painting with. You were the first person I ever had to talk about painting with. Really? I didn't, I didn't know that. I don't have. I didn't have many painter friends because I got into mini painting from a board gamer. Right. Right. And that was and same with me. Yeah. So I was just there, like mini painting, trying to find people, like. <laughs> took a long time you were the first person and you were like i like talk, talking shop and i was like dude i do too i wish i had this so like dude that's awesome like if you, if you just like talking shop everybody's got discords you can share stuff they're supportive you can get feedback different people have different styles so like some people's chats are really chill yours i um could barely tell you're mini painting half the time with what you talk about it's so funny like it could be <laughs> could be doing anything I've straight but up had like uh, narcotics anonymous meetings, like in the middle yeah. where like, we're like, and that's when I relapsed the second time. And we're like having like heavy talks. And I'm like, I'm sure everybody who's like coming to my chat to escape the, like the world of, uh, you know, the outside world and have this like li li lively thing. Like, this is not going to change. This is how this is today. <laughs> like maybe try next week if this doesn't work for you, because it won't always be like this. Right. And you can come to mind if you want to hear stories about like um, family stories that are crazy. Also, I've had people say, how are you feeling? And they were like, I don't really want to be alive today. And I was like, all right, let's talk about that. We're going right. to go into it. I know I've been there. Like, and so like, but then you can go to New Metas and then everybody's joking about, I don't, we're not even going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've straight up seen New Meta, like, like yelling at his chat. Like he was like fighting with, them. I'm like, what 
are you doing, man? This is like, it's like watching a one person knife fight. And he was just like, ah! <laughs> It is, it is, but like, but don't do that to mine, please. I don't want to fight with my. Husband. Right. Oh, I don't either. It's hard enough. Like, 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 but I think so. that the, my first bit of advice that I would say is that you set the tone for what your audience is. Like you, whatever you do, the audience will follow your lead. And so if yeah. you accidentally get political, it's getting fucking political. Get ready yep. for a ride. <laughs> yep. And um, that's why I didn't want people flirting with my mom in chat recently, even though she was fine with it. Pajamala is a bad I influence. I didn't want that flirting banter to happen. I didn't want it to be like, oh, it's funny because we're going to flirt with Min Max's mom and be like, oh, how are you doing? Blah, 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 or whatever. Because I was like, I don't want to get that started. Right. Because even like, no, I knew it would set a tone. And I was like, no, let's stop this. You have to be really cautious with those things. Um, so, yeah, dude, you said it in a more positive way. But... Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's so it's so fun to just like stream of consciousness go where chat goes. But if you are not ready for it to get off the rails, as it almost always does, because uh, you don't have, if you were doing something like mini painting, you don't have the mental fa uh, facilities to understand like that chat is going to, like you're going to just basically follow where it goes. And so yeah. you need to have like, a pretty good understanding about what type of show you're going to be putting out. Yeah, and, and you and I both have talked about just having a good idea of what you want to get out of it in general. True. Getting an idea, knowing what your goals are to begin with. Um, my original goal is just to get more publicity for my mini painting. <laughs> and then also, I just like talking to, like, I always like to be in Discord with my friends. I'd be painting and uh, somewhat having that distraction would make me paint better. I'd be like, you guys are just, I figured out NMM the first time watching American Horror Story in Discord, hanging out with my friends. <laughs> That's and awesome. Because I, like, like, I, I just like distracted myself. So that for me was like a big part of it is having that distraction. I love talking with people sure. while I'm painting. It's my favorite. I love it. So there was that. But like also just like, what are your goals? Like, who are you trying to be so-and-so? Are you trying to be... So and so, yeah. what uh, it, matters you, to you? Are you trying to go for a full on partnership? Like, are you just happy to get some stuff done and have people to talk to? Are you trying to be like a James Wapple, uh, you know, tutorial place? Like, what what is the purpose of your stream? Because if you go in not knowing these things, it is kind of until you get your stream up and going, like. I'm not going to lie, it is like kind of demoralizing. If if you don't instantly hit strike gold, it hurts like watching your talk to nobody. Like that that is Talking to nobody sucks. Yeah. Oh my god, I had, was I was alone for 20 minutes like recently with there's 20 people in there or something and like nobody was talking and I was just like, "Why am I doing this? How did I get to this point in my life <laughs> where I'm just talking at a screen?" Like, for no reason, like, what has happened? Like, I just had this whole, like, I was just like, holy shit. So I'm like, but you, those moments will happen. Yeah. And there's also, be prepared to know what you're going to talk about or not talk about on the stream. So this is something I just realized the other day. Somebody's asking me about commission prices on the stream. I would prefer not to go into that, but I didn't really know. So I kind of gave that. The reason is because there's so many variables. Yeah. So... I didn't want to like give a price, which is a base price, which that's pretty consistent, but maybe somebody in there has ordered from me, had a bunch of freehand, had OSL, special basing, doesn't really remember that. Yeah. This is, hasn't happened, I don't think, but like they don't remember that and they're like, well, I paid this much. So <laughs> right. <laughs> what, what the heck? Because they may not remember all the variables. So know what you're ready to talk about on stream because it's going to come up probably. Yeah. And it'll and come so up when you are ready really ready. not ready for it. <laughs> like mentally, right. you are never ready for it when it comes up. <laughs> yeah. And be also don't be afraid to ban people, to be honest. This is something I watch a lot of videos on Twitch, but like a lot of times if somebody's making you uncomfortable, they're likely to make the whole chat uncomfortable. Yes. No, I've banned three people total. So like I I probably got it up more, but like it's also a small community. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, like, and it's growing. 
And like, I, I'm taking a kind of an interesting approach right now and we'll see if it pays off because like I recently had uh, a, a, a very known offender pop up in my chat and I was um, mm-hmm. pleasant. I didn't, I just was like, Hey, thanks for joining us today. And I didn't go into it. And I was like, I, I'm going to see how they react because like there is a road of redemption. If people understand um, that, that how they impact chat and impact the inner, the entertainers, because that's really yeah. what we are. Um, and if we can get these people to be back on the side of the communal uh, sharing yeah. of content, then it's again, the rising tide. But like, I don't, I don't have a whole lot of hope either because I know people and especially people who aren't getting mental help for themselves. Um, the, the, them having a a revelation overnight is very difficult. (laughs) You know, I struggle with that a ton as a Buddhist. I'm all about compassion. I think the worst people in the world can be redeemed. That's why like, I strongly support like criminal justice reform. So if somebody is just like extremely just a terrible fucking person, they support all the most horrible things in the world. I would like to believe that there's a point where they can come back. My favorite story in Buddhism is where there's a guy who's like a serial killer. And he was like, I just kept being a serial killer because I didn't. That's all I'm known to be. Right. And Buddha like takes him in. Like, I'm not saying you have to be religious. I'm just saying that's where I go. But I also like it's hard. Sometimes I'm not Buddha. You know, sometimes I got to say, okay, I'm not that person. And that's why the person who was in your chat, I actually lost sleep over it, went to duff about this. Should I block that person? Even though I never had a, well, actually I did a little bit, but like I wasn't part of the big toxic situation that that person was in, but I still was like. That person caused, like, let's, let's not. person caused. They caused it. Like we, I'm not minimizing what they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, they caused entirely 100%. 100%. No, sh- so, <laughs> yeah. Ab- and absolutely. If, they, if they watch any of these interviews, I need you to know, I fucking know who you are, and I'm watching you, and I'm giving you a chance. Don't fuck it up, please. Please. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. It'd be a better world if that changes. Exactly. I mean, and that whole scenario was why I started thinking about mental health in this community because it was his poor mental health. Like, admittedly, he said this over and over again. I am having this problem and I can't deal with other people's problems by causing problems in other people's lives. And so, like, it made me realize. Hmm? And people were asking him, like, the people he offended were saying, if you can change, I could get past this. Which was beautiful it was absolutely like fucking beautiful that he was going to be allowed mercy yeah like i was crying watching a chat i was like i was like i because i know that people can be just shut down and never given a chance to redeem themselves yeah and seeing that was amazing but also it was heartbreaking watching somebody turn that down yeah and say like nope nope this is who i am i can't change yeah so like i would love to know that that person could change one day same and i and you know i i i I have a really odd relationship as somebody who has said horrible shit in their past and has been the guy who has like fucking tanked friendships because i was being a fucking prick like i don't i don't want to be the person that like if you can't make it with me you're probably not gonna make it so, because that's kind of my, my, my thing. This is, this is the last stop before like the fucking wasteland hits, or you end up on like the real true dark side with people who are way more worse than you and way more toxic. You know, like I don't want you to be over there. I would rather you yeah, be in a... people who will take you yeah. and then you get sucked in. And that's why I think both you and I have talked about how like we would like to believe that people can change because then they'll have an incentive to change. Right. Just on a pragmatic point, if you can, like, get people out of hate, then there's more love in the world. Of course. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's that's something that's important. Um, so, like, to turn that into advice, like, get ready. Like, you're never going to hang out on Twitch and not, excuse me, not run into um, some sort of conflict, whether it be with chat or with another streamer. 
like as as altruistic as we all are and as supportive as we all are uh people have bad days people have mental health struggles people misunderstand chat all the time oh and my gosh like, <laughs> all the time <laughs> Your your recent misunderstanding what happened in chat turned into really funny uh, uh, gifs that you sent me. Like they're yeah. they're, they're some of my they're, favorites. They're, they're funny. Well, I I got really hurt by somebody writing oof one time. I thought they came in to see my art and said oof. It was out of focus. <laughs> that was their crime. Out of focus. Oh my god, that's crazy. It's just oof. I was like, damn. This is, I mean, that's brutal, man. <laughs> you walk in, you're like, oof. I'm like, whoa, God damn. So, like, things happen. Yeah, truth, truth. Uh, and, like, I live, I, I, I am a, an atheist. My, my kind of spiritual code is dictated a lot by, like, uh, like ancient, like, Toltec, Native Americans or Native South Americans. Um, you know, they were like descendants of like the Mayans and stuff like that. And one of the things that they, you know, they preach was like not taking anything personally. Whatever you can do, don't take it personally. And so I think just in general, that's a good advice. But on Twitch, yeah. especially building a new community, just don't take it personally. And and don't take it personally that nobody's there watching you. Like like everything about what is happening while getting into the environment to, like take some time to understand that this this isn't a sprint to the top this is a marathon no. this is and this... i will say i gotta ooh, i got some advice so i saw somebody who was an amazing streamer they have since left and they become a really good friend outside of twitch they couldn't get their channel to grow this is just pragmatic first of all watch go to youtube and look up twitch advice if you want to yeah. be on twitch you will not usually get followers just from being a good streamer. You have to market yourself off of Twitch. Yeah. Market network within Twitch. This person was putting out great content, but didn't know how to like get anybody to watch it. And they ended up leaving and they're, they're doing well. I really like them and like, that's fine. But you got to know that like your, your fans aren't just going to be there by you being good. Cause that's just not how it works. They don't know to watch you. If nobody, you could be the best fucking most hilarious, amazing streamer in the world, but if nobody knows, they're not gonna watch you. Yeah. Yeah. So don't beat your head against a wall, not knowing that like you have to try to like create good content, get people to like you and follow you, and they know you and they like wanna see more of you, and then they'll go to Twitch to see that. Yeah. Yeah. And and and, and the content creation game is a holistic game. You have to be ready to do all of it. Uh like yeah. The second that you think that you can get away with not pushing an Instagram or a Twitter, you don't have to do all of them, but you have to do one of them really well. <laughs> and you have to yeah. do like another one kind of all right. <laughs> and yeah, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. If you are not, if you don't hit those two bells, you are going to, um, not saying that you can't get big. You like shit happens all the time that, it, you know, breaks the rules. But uh, more often than not, as as we've seen, you and I both have seen so many people jump into Twitch over the last you know six months and bounce off of it. And while they keep on trying, they keep on coming back to it. The growth is not there. And and while I want to like always be there to support people, um, you know, like sometimes you just you know that maybe they aren't maybe they aren't aren't into it as much. And so like yeah. while while that's totally fine. Make sure that make sure you understand why you're doing it. Because if if you're if you're wanting to be big, you aren't willing to put in the time. Get the fuck out of the way. Like you're doing it because it's a good release. It's a way for you to you know to, like have fun. Right. Open arms. Get in here. But absolutely. <laughs> you don't have to be. And absolutely. And that's something that I've told people before: is your path is not always the same as everybody else's path. Know what it is, because otherwise, when people are like, "Oh, well, you need to do this, this, and this," like you can say it. You don't feel like you're pulled in or you're disappointing people because you know what you want. You, you know what you already were going towards. Right. Because if you don't, sometimes you'll start to feel pressure when you didn't even check in with yourself. Like, did I even want it? Like for a long time, <laughs> I just felt so much guilt about not doing competitions. 
one day I would love to do competitions, but I need to be ready to want to deal with the criticism or potential. I need to like not have all my self esteem hinge on a competition. Sure. You know, and so that's my path. Yours yeah. might be like, you know, like I don't know, maybe like I don't know what I'm trying to say. That's gone. <laughs> I mean, like I, I'm I'm with you though. Like that's understanding why you're doing it and if it's worth it is like the biggest part you know like i i had um one of my favorite parts about twitch is that like that youtube doesn't have like and you can live stream anywhere like the the, the youtube uh instagram live streaming thing is a thing that i'm like who the fuck watches this shit like i, I hate watch watching it, it. I, it it's I hard don't, and i watch all reality shows i watch probably 10 to 15 hours of reality show discussion outside of the reality shows and i still won't watch it if it's on instagram live i can't stand it it's so bad and like i'm happy that they have an audience actually like truthfully it's very exciting but also you're like this is miserable content to watch it's always out of focus it's always grainy it always sounds like shit i like I don't like holding my phone and looking at it like this. Oh, and it's not either. easy to do it on. I just I throw my phone on the floor. I don't. <laughs> I don't like looking at it on a computer. It, it the format of it is really weird. However, if Twitch shuts down and everybody moves to Instagram Live, I'll be there. Everybody watch me. Thank you. Yeah, Sundays <laughs> at noon, Central Time. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but you, I'm not confident when it comes to that. But YouTube doesn't have the communal aspect that Twitch does, where like. My favorite parts of Twitch is having a raid at the end of the day um, that is like, I am done streaming. I can take my followers and my fans and the people who have joined me today. And I'm like, you guys get ready for this. We're going over here. It's like it's like a radio DJ say, signing off at the end of the hour. And we got, you know, like, <laughs> it, there's something about it that, that's really fun. Yeah. But um, also understand that um sometimes you get raided by huge groups of people and it happens where you're like 100 people from zambies uh i had 120 people from sam lens on my first rate the first time i was ever raided was with 120 people holy crap and wow. luckily for me i have been a performer my entire life like even before I was on stage, I had to build a stage for myself. Otherwise, like I disappeared into the background. Um, if you can't handle that, there's no problem with. It. Like, don't take it. Like, I raided into a person once, and they told afterwards they told me that they froze and they had to like get off. And I was like, I'm really sorry that I did that. I felt bad for them that I had done something for them. Um, that you know upset their time like if you are unable to do that don't don't take offense to it like don't um and don't hold yourself to a standard that you have to deal with a group that big because it's a lot <laughs> it's a yeah. lot to deal with a chat that active and it also really sucks when the chat the group never stays you never are left with 120 people like it instantly goes down to like 80 oh, yeah. and then it ends, and then it goes down to 50 and then you might have like you know double your normal numbers but like that is something that i don't want anybody to uh don't put your value on whether or not you can handle like everything that comes at you sometimes you need to retreat that's totally fine whatever you do yeah. to stay safe emotionally yeah, agree. Um, and also remember that not everything is for everyone. Whoever, whatever you and I consider the best stuff in the world, everybody should watch. <laughs> isn't for everybody. No. You know, like the, the quote unquote best stuff is not for everybody. Some people are going to think that like you talk about alcohol too much. I don't know. Well, like, or like, I just fucking rambled. Nobody cares to hear stories about my mom and her pickup truck and her shotgun or whatever. Like, like that's not for everybody that's all right yeah and like, and 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 don't feel like you need to put on airs uh to to appeal to everybody like they're either gonna like you for who you are or they're gonna figure out that you're not who you say you are so like be yourself yeah, yeah. and uh, you know what and when i was very depressed i 
told everybody because I felt safe. This community is amazing. I'm so sorry if I've been negative if anybody thinks that because like it is not. The streamer community is amazing. The yeah. mini community. I've never stayed a part of any community ever until the <laughs> mini community. Never stayed a part of one. Yeah. It's it's incredible. They're super helpful. They will actually take the time to teach you what they know. I will. If you need help, come to me. Like, <laughs> like I will. Like I very much like love reaching out to people, and I think other people do too. And we all want to like lift each other up, and we love to see what everybody's working on. And I think it's because it's, we all can spend time painting something, the same thing. We yeah. can all do it on our own time. It doesn't necessarily ruin it for each other. Right. And so like it's a it's a fun fucking place to be. And like I was able to like say like I'm super depressed and people were like that sucks we're here for you when you come back yeah. and I was like I was so depressed I was like God damn it don't say that I'm gonna come back. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean you're right that that is something that like um you know in even in the like most uh like oil and water personalities because they they exist on Twitch don't think that like ev everyone is friends you know like we all get along because like it 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 makes sense to not be shitty in a small community but like you know everybody even the people who you may like completely bounce off of if you stopped and asked them hey i actually have something chances are you're going to get a really good reaction and you're going to get a really That's genuine true. act i will specifically say when i had my first issue with um of the first dude that was like just crossing <laughs> lines guy. and I had to I had to bounce things off of people like are these red flags I was able to reach out to I think I reached out to five different female streamers of different levels and they all said hang on I'm gonna message you right now one was streaming Holly Monster was mid stream and said stream like a D&D &D thing was like hold on just text me I can't talk to you voice wise right now and talk to me anyway I was like holy shit like don't do that but I mean and like a bunch more of them Zambies, Eni, Shoshi all of them were fucking amazing they said we know exactly what you're talking about we got this you're gonna like be okay yeah all like amazing like I had never had that much validation about a <laughs> interpersonal issue at all Period. In your whole life. In your whole life, yes. I yeah. that much support. Like, period. Like, yeah, I was like, holy shit. Like, I felt, like, very tethered for the first time. It was great. Yeah. yeah. And so, well, like, I hope that's... to be able to do that for others as well. I'm so glad that you had that interaction. And that's when, um, because that happened so fast. It was, like, second week of you being on, I think. It was, it was <laughs> okay. so early. I remember being like, what have I gotten her into? Is this place really as good as I thought it was? And then seeing that people who didn't know you from anywhere, like you know, just like gave you good advice, and you know, like I was like, no, this is the place. This is the community. Yeah. And um, and like I said, even if you aren't good friends with everybody, that's totally fine. No, no worries. Like you know, we we all um, we all are very supportive, and we just we really do want everybody to to, to succeed because. It is a rising tide sort of scenario. The more people that are finding you means that the more people that are on the platform may get a chance to find me. And like, we don't own any of our fans. We're thrilled that they're there. No, <laughs> no, and there's nobody's taking your fans. Like, right. unless they absolutely have all your same time slots. Like, that's not how it works. No, we can't. Like, I don't think so anyway. And if somebody else feels that way. I don't want to like negate their feelings, but like the truth is like, if I share more things with you, people might, you know what? They might've been like, you know, MinMax is the only one to watch on Twitch. They forget to eventually look at Twitch. If they watch MinMax and Heath, maybe they're like, oh, I was already on Twitch. And then I'm checking out more people. They might just spend more time on the platform. Yeah. So and don't now I'm watching you know Gamer Dad and now I'm watching uh, Dysis and like, who's the zombie character going on? You know, like pragmatically the more they're engaged the more they're just gonna enjoy your stream probably it, because none of us none of us that like really watch twitch are like oh i only want maybe they are but like they're not like oh i don't like heath anymore you know just want to watch whatever instead yeah. like that's not usually how it works we they like like we all go into the other streams mm -hmm. my my partner is that it's very incestuous we're all in each other's chat. It is. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, and it's so much fun it's to be 
to be on the fun. other side of chat after you have been like talking for so long and then you hop into somebody's chat and you're like what's going on everybody <laughs> finally i can yeah. talk <laughs> and you're like hey what's up hey what's up like it's so fun like yeah but like yeah. it doesn't have to be just a competition if somebody no. there's there are a couple situations where people can steal followers but like sure. they're so rare that's yeah. not really how it works yeah well and like, you people can there's not a limit. There's not like, a, oh, you're only allowed to follow five this week unless you pay more. Like, <laughs> right. Well, and I think you and I were talking off air once, and I think that your exact way that you said is that sort of mentality is a thought, uh, a thought of poverty. Like there is only so much to go around. Yeah, and and so it's, mentality. yeah, there's, you have to have the abundance mentality. And truthfully, content creation, period, is an, is abundance because it's only growth like if you have one follower right now you have like 100 percent growth chance <laughs> you're, you're, you are there's only up to go and uh and while that road is rocky like the idea that you are uh that you're only gonna plateau by doing uh something like you you are your plateau like the 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 platform is not so treat yeah, it. I noticed, I noticed like after coming back and being depressed, like my subscriber numbers were dismal, like were, uh, horrible. Yeah. And then, you know what? I was like, I know I'm not giving it all. And I've already doubled them within two streams being right. happier, like early like, giving it all. Like, and maybe you don't, maybe you don't have it all to give. Don't get me wrong. Sure. But understand like there are lows and highs and stuff too. That'll happen. That's life. Like, life isn't always going to get better and better that's just not possible right like that so it, things will change and like be adaptable too because things are going to change terms of services can change somebody i think i'm gonna call you out needs to get used to the fact that maybe you can't play copyrighted music sometimes you oh, may yeah. have to change that and you're gonna have to deal with it yep oh i know <laughs> <laughs> I uh I I am I am dreading that day because right now it's so much fun. <laughs> like I know you're so much fun, but you gotta be adaptable. Yep. Well, I mean, you know, I've got like a ton of music that I could just turn on in the background and have as like bass noise going on. Like you know, like I've I I have a backup plan, but while I can have a pirate radio station and not have the FCC come down on me, I am totally gonna listen to you know <laughs> like. <laughs> all of those bands that nobody wants anymore i'm like yeah we're we're listening to uh you know echo and the bunny men today we're listening to ministry jesus built my hot rod <laughs> i it's love it blast. it is a blast but you got to remember things are going to change that yeah. stinks it's tough like yeah. there's and there's also things that aren't fair that sucks i do also think we should fight back if they're like super unfair mm -hmm. but it's always going to happen i don't know if you've ever worked at a job and they'll be like an old usually it's a woman and she's like well, i didn't get paid to do this and you're like girl things are gonna change like that that mentality will hold you back if you want things to be the same that's one thing about life Not everything is temporary everything twitch didn't exist one day twitch won't exist at all right. one day the internet won't exist and we'll all be dead <laughs> so like it's like that things are gonna change uh, you know, I've I've never actually experienced a woman say I don't get paid enough to do this or I didn't get paid to do this. It's only been men, so that's really funny. Like that you've you uh, experience as women, I good. experience as men. I think that there's just people who are like inflexible <laughs> that are just flat out like I'm a rigid board in the middle of a tornado, and it's like you're gonna fucking snap and be gone. Like you have to be you have to be like the grass a job where my it changed entirely and i was like you know what this isn't for me and that's okay too so if things change you can also be like you know what the job did change yeah this is what i signed up for and say i'm not on board anymore yeah. that's okay yeah May and maybe it isn't twitch maybe it's youtube maybe it's fucking instagram i don't care like do something like if if the one platform isn't working for you try another one like don't that's don't true. be like well it didn't work here like it's but don't go on TikTok because I'm too old to watch it. TikTok, I don't understand. I don't understand. I'm like, I'm just so tough. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go on TikTok. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, shit. We have covered a lot of ground, and we did. um, and we we've had a lot of ups and downs, and I think that we've end, ended up on a pretty positive note. Um. So yeah, before, I, 
before we end up back down in the darkness. <laughs> People think that I like ha- I'm, am just a negative person. I just do have a lot of challenges. I think about a lot of things, but I'm also like trying to fix them. I'm always trying to look for like a way to make the world better, or more compassionate place i always want to be my healthiest self so that i can help others somebody one time like jokingly i was like does anybody have any questions and they said like what's the meaning of life and i said to work on yourself to be in the best situation that you're in so that you can be compassionate and helpful to others um and they're like holy shit (laughs) i was like i had unanswered i don't know if it's right but i like it i love that i love that answer so like, uh, I think that, that is you, the goal. But there's challenges. I th- I think that you have been for me one of uh the most fun fun experiences to watch because like it I've seen like success like s- success that like not gonna lie I was like I'm a little I'm a like I'm a little envious of this like this is this is something that like. When you see an audience like just going crazy in chat when you hop into it, like there's this thing of just like, oh, that's so cool. And then you're like, why can't this happen to me? Like, like what, what, that, why, why am I not getting this? Um, you know, like, uh, it, 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 it made me think about my chat more, but it also made me realize that like what comes along with that is something that's totally different too. And like we both are now having to, you know, really look at like the the content that we put out and the way that we interact with the community in a way that uh, you know makes sense uh, emotionally and is sustainable. Because like you can do it for a little yeah. bit, but like I, I mean, I like I've never really told anybody that like I have thought very hard about stopping you know using Twitch as you know, as the platform and maybe only going over to YouTube and you know just saying fuck this and like be on my own little island. Um, and, and the truth is like, I don't want that. I like, I like what happens here. Warts and all, like oh, I, I want, I wanted to quit and woke up the next day. Like, no, I don't, I don't. Like, I just got it for sure. And I woke up the next day and I was like, no, I don't. This sounds really sad. I'm really sad about this. I got to figure it out. Like yeah. there's, there are some beautiful things, but you can get like really used to those. And then you kind of neglect like remembering what was good because that becomes normal yeah yeah like people wanting to come in at all <laughs> like that's a nice thing you suddenly like i got 20 people in here it's not 30 like other people would want that so like keep that in mind too the, the other day like i started off and like, i had like four people in chat for like 20 minutes it was weird like normally like my thing was like gets going up pretty quick and you know before i know i'm like 15 and then i'm at 25 and then i'm at 30 and i'm like oh cool this is great like we were just like four of us but all four people were talking and i was like this this is why i'm here like all four of us are are having a back and forth and before i knew it it was like crazy (laughs) but like you know appreciate that little bit like the whole the whole thing it's really it's a, a special relationship it is. It's very special. Like just when you get to know people and you're like, Oh, so, so you're here. Hey, what's up? Like, and you've seen them in the other one and you guys have, that's one beautiful thing about like the chat. You guys have like mutual references for things. You can say jokes that everybody gets. That's just nice. I just love it. Like yeah. you guys all have like an idea. Like you could just make a sass holes joke and everybody knows exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, it's so much fun. Well, uh, Nick, thank you so much again for for doing this, being my first se- guest on here for a second time. Uh, thank you for being so honest and open. Uh, I mean, I truly love you. You are one of my best friends, and I'm glad that we have managed to communicate and grow together and help each other out through this. Um, because even though, like, like, yeah, I've helped you, you don't understand that, like, you have helped me in many ways through this as well that, you know, that make you feel better. Yeah, <laughs> it, I like I ask you for a lot sometimes. No, yeah. you, you've always been really um, every you've never crossed a line where I'm just like, oh boy, like here's Nick again. This is this is a thing. You anytime that you've done it and in any of the, our back and forths, I have grown from as well because chances are, even though I hadn't really outwardly said it, like I'm 
thinking these same things. I'm going through similar. That's emotions. what I noticed through this. Yeah. And so I absolutely appreciate that. Like you have just, as a human, like your, your show is great. Everybody likes how they time in murder basement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like also just as a human, you have been so important to me over these last months, just getting through this. Like, I know I can come to you and you're like, yeah, sometimes like you'd be surprised how hard it is to get like a, yeah, that sucks sometimes. <laughs> Right. <laughs> it's not that easy. Like, don't ever like no one out there ever think that like saying like, yeah, that sucks. is like not a big deal. It is. Well, and I think the difference between like the ENFPs, we are fixers. We want to fix whatever is going on. Like and like half the time when we talk out and we're extroverting something that uh, is a problem to us. Well, we might want feedback. A lot of the times we just are like getting it the fuck out, like whatever is there. That's and so, uh, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's it's huge. Uh, uh, yeah, that sucks. Fix a lot of problems. <laughs> sure does. Thank you again. Appreciate it. Like, oh my god, thanks so much. I'm glad to be the second person. The the first second person. Now people know it's possible. It's it, is possible. it is possible. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I'm glad that you're in a good space too, because um, I want I want more people to find uh, find your uh, your Twitch, your Instagram. I want more people to pay uh, pay you to paint cool things for them because I think you're fantastic. Right now, you're booked out till February. Is that what you told me? I think so. Depending on how long it's going to paint some things, at least. That's so, so cool. That's so yeah, cool. Like, you know what? Okay, and they're, I'm shipping it out, and like it's fucking awesome. I love it. Painting. <laughs> that's so good so uh if you want uh min max to paint your models get in early like like get a deposit in hold your space because she's she's in demand and, and i'll i'll look at i'll get to it i will get to it for you sure will. <laughs> you absolutely will all right nick thank right. you so much okay thanks see ya Thank you for making it through another episode of Hobby Time in the Murder Basement. I really appreciate your support. If you'd like to continue the support in other ways, I do have a Patreon. The link is down below. Proceeds from that will go to pay for new equipment, subscription fees if I need it, and uh, graphic design stuff. I'd like to d help build this channel. So any of your support is, while never necessary, is always appreciated. If you want to see more hobby stuff, you can head on over to Twitch. I generally stream on Sundays at noon. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.